Hello and welcome to Menu Docs. My name is Vex and I'm one of the newest members to the content creators team. Today, I'm going to be doing a series on how to make a web dashboard to communicate with the Philips Hue lighting. Now, don't worry if you don't have Philips Hue lighting because there are many other API wrappers for different smart lights. Right, before we get started, we need to download a couple of things. We need to download Python and a text editor. At the time of recording this video, Python 3.9 is the latest release. If you already have Python installed, make sure you have at least Python 3.5 installed to follow along with this tutorial. Set it up. I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code because I like it. Right, now that you've got all the stuff you need to get started, let's create a workspace. I'm going to create my workspace in my documents folder and I'm going to call it Python Hue or PHU dashboard. Right, now that we've created our workspace, let's open up our text editor. I'm going to drag and drop my workspace in there so it opens up. Now that we've done that, we need to install one module. We need to open up a command prompt or terminal. To install Flask, type pip install Flask. I've already got it installed, so I'm not going to run the command. Right, let's get into the coding side. First, we need to create a main.py. This is going to be our main file. We also need to create a folder, and we need to call it templates. And inside of there, we need to create another file called login.html. In our main.py, we need to import Flask and some functions from it. To do this, we can type from Flask input flask request and render template now we need to declare a new flask app to do this we can do app equal flask underscore name now we need to create two routes our index route we're just going to leave as a forward slash and we're going to only allow a get method Inside of here, I'm just going to return hello world. If you get this terminal appearing up here, just ignore it. Just hit the close panel. We don't need it yet. Now we need to create our authentication route. Our authentication count is going to allow two methods, get and post. Now we need to determine which request method we're getting. For the get request, we want to return our login.html file. We can do this by creating an if statement. If request.method is equal to get, we're going to return render template login.html. This is going to render this file to the user. Now we need to check if we're getting a post request. We can do this by typing else if dot method equal to post. And we're just going to return a string of text. We're nearly done with this file. We need to check to make sure only this file is being called, not by an import or anything else, else we don't want to run our web server, as that could lead to problems down the line. Now that we're done with our main.py folder, let's move on to our login.html. And in this file, we're going to create a basic HTML structure and implement a form with very basic form validation. Cool thing about Visual Studio, it comes with Mnet, which allows you to type the tag, then hit tab, and it will automatically fill it out. If your IDE or text editor doesn't come with this and has plugins, try looking through the plugins manager and see if you can find Mnet. It's very useful. Right, there's a few things we need to specify for our form. First, we need to give it a name so we can access it in our JavaScript file. I'm going to call it auth form. I'm going to get the action of forward slash auth. 
and on on submit return valid the on submit property is going to call the function validate which we're going to create in a second which is going to check to make sure all the fields were filled out properly let's create two input fields first one's going to be an email I'm going to give it a name of email. I'm going to remove ID and change ID to placeholder. And I'm going to put enter your email here. I'm going to create another input. It's going to be a password one. Inside of here, I'm going to put password in the name. And I'm going to do the same thing and remove ID and change it to placeholder. We need to create another input tag, but this input tag is not going to be one where a user can insert text. It's going to be a button. I'm just going to put the value as login. Right, now that we've created our form, let's do some very basic JavaScript validation. We can do this by creating a script tag. Inside of here, we're going to create our validate function. Let's access the form by typing let form equal document forms auth form now let's get the email value Right, now that we've got this, let's create an if statement to make sure that these aren't empty or filled with white spaces. Underneath here, we're just going to return true to let the form know that it is ready to be sent to the auth route using the post method. I made a little typo here. This should be methods, not method. Let's try running our Python file again. There we go. It worked. If we go to localhost port 5000 in our browser, you'll see it is returning hello world. If we go back to our code, that's what we told Flask to return when a request was made to our index route. Now if we go back to our auth, you see the form pops up. Let's try submitting it with no data. Please fill out the form correctly. It works. Now if we fill out the form correctly, it's going to work. But it's only going to return what we put in our code here. Post method return exclamation mark. As you can see, it worked. All right, that's it for today's episode. In the next video, we're going to be finishing up our authentication route and creating a base HTML file with some bootstrap. Make sure to subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed this video. And I hope to see you in the next episode. Bye.